Local 5 is proud to bring you Hispanic Heritage, a celebration of the Hispanic community and their impact across Northeast Wisconsin. Now, let's celebrate Hispanic Heritage together. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Local 5's celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month. The holiday runs from the middle of September and extends into October so as to include all the national days of the many Spanish-speaking countries across the globe. Tonight, we'll show you how you can sample the customs of several of these countries without ever having to leave Northeast Wisconsin. A look at how Wisconsinites embrace the culture through music, food, commerce, and faith. We'll also show you how teachers are using music and dance to shape the next generation. We begin with the Marinette store that's breaking barriers just by opening. Local 5's Barrett Tryon introduces us to the family that just wanted to bring something authentically Mexican to Wisconsin. I used to live in Texas, actually, so when I heard about this opening, I was super, super excited. Allison Blair stopped by Leo's Mercado in Marinette on a Friday afternoon. To be able to get some of my favorites and things I haven't been able to have in like three years or more. Before opening earlier this summer, she used to have to rely on friends mailing her things from back home. I was looking for some corn tortillas and, you know, looking for some good fresh ones because I know he goes to Green Bay and gets the good stuff. Yeah. It's something owner Selena Hernandez knows all about. We have a huge Hispanic community here. Um, and we wanted to bring some light to that by bringing in um, the store. After a few years of debating whether or not to open their own shop, she and her husband Eduardo decided now was the time to do it. Meeting a demand for an area that previously did not have a market specializing in Mexican food. We would travel to Green Bay for some of our stuff um, and then if we wanted certain stuff we'd travel to Milwaukee, to El Rey, um, and then you know some of our customers even travel to Chicago. The store is actually named after the couple's son, Leo, but their slogan is something that they live by here, and that's bringing family home. It's something Selena is passionate about and is proven by the great lengths some of her customers travel to shop. We have customers that come from Escanaba. Every weekend they come, they, they pile up in cargo vans and they come and check us out. The store has plans for more. Selena says they will soon start offering meats and branch out. If the store does not have what you're looking for. Chances are they can find it and get it for you. My husband um, travels to Chicago every Monday um, to get the items that you need um, and then brings them back. So he leaves at three, three in the morning and comes back eight, nine o'clock at night. A small store making a huge impact. In Marinette, so Barrett Tryon, Local 5 News. The most popular item sold, turns out it's the corn tortillas. Selena jokes she can hardly keep them on the shelves. Leo Mercado's market isn't the only Latino-owned business making a name for itself. Main Salon and Spa on Green Bay's east side is Latino-owned and operated and prides itself on bringing a pampered lifestyle to people from all walks of life. The owners are dedicated to live by their motto, enhance the beauty in you. I wanted to have a place where everyone felt welcome. And, and there were some locations, and it's fine, but there were some locations where not everyone, all my clientele felt welcome. Because so many at the salon are bilingual, customers never have to worry about a language barrier. The main salon and spa is celebrating 12 years in business. Congratulations. And still to come, the local dance troupe that is back to performing in public. And throughout the evening, we are delighted to share the musical talents of El Salvador's Julio Reyes, who now calls the Fox Valley home. Good to see you again, my friend. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> it was this time last year we first saw each other. Yes. Out at the Green Bay Botanical Garden. What a wonderful concert it was. But oh. now with all the COVID restrictions lifted, you must be playing a lot. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Yeah, probably five to six nights a week. Incredible, and yeah. it's your original music. Um, a lot of it is, um, we do a lot of different things. Uh, the thing about my band is that we're kind of a Rubik's Cube because we turn into, uh, we do R&B, and then we turn into a salsa band, and then we do jazz. Oh, well, enough and... talking. I, <laughs> I want to hear a little. So please, here now is our chance to listen and stay with us. We're only getting started. Julio. Take it away, my friend. All right. Oh. 
Welcome back to Local 5's celebration of Hispanic heritage. This time last year, a local dance troupe was sidelined by the COVID pandemic. The Nicolay Elementary School performers are now back in front of the public in a spectacle of color and flair. Our group has currently eight students, four girls and four boys, that dance Mexican folklorical dances. We started about six years ago um, with a small group of kids from Nicolay just for Hispanic Heritage Month and to practice simple folkloric dances at school. Um, and it kind of grew into a touring, tra traveling group. It's important to know who you are and where you're from and to show people that you're, you are who you are. We practiced twice a week, all every week, all summer long, um, for an hour and a half each practice. They learn accountability, they learn that their team is counting on them. These are a lot of soft skills that can transfer very easily into the workforce and their daily lives as students right now. It feels like um, I'm proud of myself of doing all these hard dances. This is not something you see on the news. You see um, the news of caravans and immigrants and, and it's really depressing. This is something that everyone can kind of come together and be excited about, um, whether they have Latino heritage or not. Um, they see the colors and they see the flashy dancing and they hear the music that sounds like polka to us Wisconsinites. And it's, it's something they can relate to. And I think that that builds bridges. Bravo. Soul Ballet Folklorico de Nicolet is made up of students of Mexican descent. There's one dancer with Puerto Rican connections, but really any student who wants to can take part. They have a website where any group interested in booking a performance can reach out. And coming up next, a real taste of El Salvador. And as we go to break, why not a transplant from El Salvador? Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Julio Reyes. <laughs> Yo quiero darte un beso bajo la luna Porque yo sé que tú vas a estar conmigo Oh, no, no, no No puedo vivir sin ti No puedo vivir sin ti No puedo So much of culture is expressed through food. In El Salvador, there's a dish so popular, it became the national dish. And we here in Northeast Wisconsin don't have to travel very far to get a taste. In the skilled hands of Teresa Ramirez, the national dish of El Salvador is served up fresh daily in Northeast Wisconsin. Pupusa is it's like a tortilla. Inside the tortilla, pork. Uh, we have only cheese. We have cheese with loroco. Loroco is uh, this um, flour that has a specific taste to it. Ramirez and her husband came to Green Bay some 15 years ago and first worked on a dairy farm before opening their own place. San Salvador native Walter Reyes says it's of great comfort to taste a part of where he came from in the city he now calls home. I was one of the first ones who came here because I think the closest is in Milwaukee and that's way too far. I've been in the U.S. since 1982 so it does make uh, miss my home less because it brings a piece of my land I guess to me. And for just as much as Walter enjoys having a taste of home here in Green Bay, 
there are people who were born here in Wisconsin who are frequent customers who say they love the idea that a culture not of our own has found a home here. They taste really good and the french fries are really, you know, they taste even better, I think, honestly. And the, this is different. This is a different heritage. I, you don't get to see everywhere. You don't get to see it everywhere else. Like if you go outside of like Northeast Wisconsin, you're not going to see something like this very often. I, I love having these type of restaurants opening here in Green Bay and diversifying the area more. Mi Salvador Pupuseria makes the dish both from cornmeal and rice. They're located at 1620 Lime Kiln Road. I'm no expert, but I recommend it with the pickled cabbage and their special tomato sauce. You know, much of the Catholic faith is very important to the Hispanic community, and that's why the Green Bay Diocese celebrates Mass in Spanish. St. Peter and Paul Church in Green Bay hosts a Spanish Mass at 7.30 in the morning and noon every Sunday. Father Jose Lopez says in any language the message is clear, but there is something special when you can hear it in the language you learned from birth. It's not that we're doing nothing out of the ordinary. Everything we're doing is what the church offers. People come, pray before Mass, people get ready, then we pray. Mass is not a show, it's not something to be put on, but it's something to be led people to that encounter with God. There are currently more than 25,000 Hispanics in the Green Bay Diocese. And still to come, we ask folks in the Fox Valley what it means to be Latino. Their answers are still to come as Julio serenades us to the break. Take it away, my friend. Spanish speakers live in every county in Wisconsin, and the public festival has become a bridge between cultures. Local 5 photojournalist Olivia Talmadge shows us more from Appleton's Latino Fest. The more community feels supported, the more they can um, empower themselves. We thought that uh, we needed to celebrate our culture with the uh, larger community. So Latino Fest has been going on, I think we have the sixth annual. The idea is to celebrate all the different cultures, Latino cultures that come together. And so we bring that with music, food, and then our community partnerships. We focus on providing opportunities for our youth of color. Um, we have different opportunities um, in school and outside of school. I have three children, so it was nice to come and check out um, the stands, and they have a lot of resources from the community that we didn't even know. Oh, I think it's great. I think the more events like this, I think people get to know our culture better and what we're about. What does it mean to you to be Hispanic or Latino? Well, family. I'm making good food. It's my whole life. It means everything. Just to pass on my heritage to my children, my grandchildren. It's language, it's music. The different traditions that people have and kind of keeping those alive and celebrating those to my life. It's, it makes me who I am. And it makes our community what it is. The money from Latino Fest goes to scholarships and grants, ensuring enhanced opportunities for the next generation. We are back in a moment, so please stay with us. More now from the incomparable Julio Reyes. Oh, yo quiero dar We are so grateful to have musician Julio Reyes with us here tonight as Local 5 celebrates Hispanic Heritage Month. 
let's talk a little bit about this wonderful musician who we've enjoyed so much. I can't believe the half hour has flown by already. I know. You are from El Salvador. You yes. live now in the Fox Valley. Mm -hmm. Which is home? Uh, well, you know, I grew up here in Green Bay. Uh, I went to school in the pier. In college, uh, UW Green Bay, but right now my home, I would say, is Oshkosh, Wisconsin. And what does Hispanic Heritage Month mean to you? Well, you know, coming from a country, um, a whole different, you know, when I come here, when I came here to America, you know, it was a whole different change, you know, culture shock. And the, the fact that I can still appreciate where I come from and being able to still have my heritage, even though I've also adapted the American culture, is something that I, I love and cherish because even though I live here now, I also want to remember where I come from. So It's so wonderful. And the thing that's also remarkable, you are a working musician. This is how you make your money. This is yes, your career. Yeah. So the audience must be here in Northeast Wisconsin. Uh, yes, I, you know, I play all over the state. And uh, when I get opportunities to leave the state and go play somewhere else, then obviously uh, I, you know, I take the opportunities. But I play mostly here in Wisconsin or now, looking to expand into uh, more opportunities. But yeah, just excited to be here and play. We are so excited to have you. And we can tell everybody you saw Julio Reyes first here on <laughs> Local 5. And we want to thank you, all our viewers, for supporting our efforts here tonight by watching. Look for more stories from near and far on Local 5 News at 4. We'll also be posting this special tonight on our website at wearegreenbay.com. And we'll see you tonight for Local 5 News at 10. We leave you now with more of the incredible sounds of my friend, Julio Reyes. Thank you. Pensé que esto iba a ser Mis sentimientos han cambiado Y lo que siento no es igual de ayer yeah. Y ahora siento que te amo Yo quiero verte y volver a ver Y ahora siento que te amo Oh, oh, oh. 